So today, today I would like to share with you this the message four spiritual laws for our peace, joy, and eternal life as the title of the message. This message is heard. Christians around the world, churches around the world preach this simple message and it saves millions of people. So it looks like it's very simple like that, but it saves millions of people around the world. So uh, it is good for us to know four simple steps or four spiritual laws by just knowing these four steps, these, when people un- understand it, it can save their lives. How important it is, right? So four spiritual laws are ways of sharing the good news of salvation that is available through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a simple way of organizing the gospel message in four simple steps. So, the Bible, the whole Bible can be summed up in, a, in this way, in a, very, uh, in a very simple four steps. So the first law, the first step is that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for you. God has a plan, a wonderful plan for each and every one of us, the first simple step. How do we know? The Bible tells us, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So for all of us, some people may say, okay, God doesn't care for me. God doesn't bother me. In my sufferings and in my difficulties, God doesn't care. Some people might think like this. That's not true. God loves us and actually has a wonderful plan for everybody. You may be thinking people who are brilliant in their studies, brilliant in things that they do, God may have a plan, but I don't, I'm not sure if God has a plan for me. I want to tell you, every human, being on, human beings on earth, God has a plan for them. Because we didn't understand that, and John chapter 10 verse 10 tells us, the reason why Lord Jesus Christ came also was that He said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So here is abundant life. Here is a life that is lived in full, which is God's plan. And here is God who wants everyone to live with a purpose. He has a plan for everybody. So you may be wondering, do I have this abundant life? Do I have this? Do I live knowing that God loves me? God has a purpose for me, for my life. If you are not sure about it, that means you really need to understand this message. So the first step is that God has a plan for everybody. So if if we do not know that God has a plan for me, I'm just existing as it is. And I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to see another day. That means we live without a purpose. We we live without goal and purposes. But God has a plan for everybody. Second thing is, however, even though God's plan for us is wonderful and to live a joyful and peaceful life, if we don't, that's called abundant life, right? To live joyfully, peacefully, this is called abundant life. Not necessarily having a lot of money, not necessarily having fame. You can have fame but not, uh, not have peace. You can have a lot of money but have no peace, no joy. So, abundant life as we see in the scripture is having the joy and the peace and eternal life. So, do I have this life, abundant life, peaceful life, joyful life, confident life? The Bible tells us that even though God's plan was like that, we all, because of the sinful nature, that is called the second law. The second of the four spiritual laws is humanity is tainted by sins and therefore he has been separated from God. 
Okay. We are, in other words, human being, God created a beautiful world in the beginning. He wants people to live in joy and peace. But what happened? Suddenly, sin came and separated us from having all this plan of God. So, sin, in other words, is separation from God. Sometimes we are thinking that sin is like we do something wrong and then we become sinners. No, no, no. Sin is that even though maybe you are doing something right also, but you are separated from God. You, it looks like you are doing things right yesterday, today, you know, you, you want to do many th- good things, but still you may be far away from God, separated from God. In other words, sin is not just about what we do only. In our being itself, we can be a sinner. And so what? Sin is not just doing things, but sin is not having connection with God. I do things right, I feel like I'm doing things right, but why I do not have the peace? Why I do not have the joy? Why I do not have life that the Bible is talking about? Because you are separated from God. So, the second thing that we see is the scripture tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 23. There is no one righteous, not even one. For all have fall short of for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When it says all, it includes all. It's not just about some of us. Every human being is tainted with sin and falls short of the glory of God. You may be saying, what about those people who seem to be doing good things, they are sacrificing, they are becoming great leaders for their communities and religion. I'm telling you, no one occupies those, those places without going through rigorous training and cleansing process. And when they feel they are clean enough, they put them in those places. It simply shows that men are all sinners. What, when they think that they are clean enough, according to them, they may be clean enough, but according to God, are they clean? That is what the Bible is concerned about. So what is happening? The first law is that God has a beautiful plan for us. Second thing is, we cannot have that beautiful plan of God because we are tainted with sins. And we are separated from God. And of course, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 tells us, Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. He said, sin, our sin, our iniquities have separated us from the living God. In other words, when we are in sin, the, we cannot approach the Holy God. We cannot have His plan and His purpose in our lives. We are separated. Therefore, what is the consequences? If we sin, if we are sinners, every human being is sinner. In other words, don't be so sad. You are not alone. Everyone is a sinner. Sometimes we try to condemn people who we feel like they are more sinners, right? Maybe people who have uh, you know, committed adultery or people who have been caught in stealing. We think they are more sinful. Oh, and we have a condemning heart, right? People who, are maybe, who may be addicted to drugs or alcohol, we, try, we tend to look down upon them, right? But sin is sin. It doesn't matter whether it's adultery, it doesn't matter whether it, uh, it is stealing something, it is also killing people, murder, sin is sin. Therefore, what is the wages of sin? What is the penalty of sin? Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us, the wages of sin is death. So what do we deserve? God has a beautiful plan, because of sin, we cannot have that plan, we cannot have fellowship with God, and man, without fellowship with God, 
will not be able to have the joy and the peace and eternal life. So what is next? Because of sin, we deserve death. But God loved us so much, we read out in the beginning. For God so loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ. The third spiritual law is that God provided a solution to our sin problem. He's not someone who says, okay, they are, they are sinful, let them be condemned. When we see people like that, for us, we have a condemning heart, right? He has done this wrong. Let him be defeated. Let him be mocked. Let him be embarrassed. We judge them like anything. But what about God? God God's heart is so painful. Oh, this daughter, this son, these children, they have done wrong. They deserve punishment. They deserve death. So what shall I do? I will do anything in my capacity, anything in my capacity to save these people. So what did he do? He sent his son, Lord Jesus Christ. He made a provision through Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we can be forgiven. The Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, So God, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. He didn't die if you... If he didn't die because if and so, he died irrespective of. Nevertheless, he died for them. He didn't die because, see, if you repent, I will die for you. He didn't say that. If you do something a little bit better today, you fast for 10 days, 3 days, half day fasting for 40 days, 10 days, I will die for you. He didn't say it. While they are still sinners, he died for them. Hallelujah. That is the power of the gospel. So, do we have this power of the gospel in our lives? The love that embraces a sinner. Even when Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, He welcomed sinners. Tax collectors, the prostitutes, and all these people, sinners. People didn't understand how, why He is welcoming these people. Why is giving chance to these people? Lord Jesus Christ came for that purpose, to save every human being. His love was like that. I hope that we can also reveal this power of the gospel in our lives. When people understand this, that we have this, their hearts can melt. Their hearts can be fully melted. They can be touched deeply and this can transform people's life so lawfully if we go people okay you come we teach you if you obey then God may love you no 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 they are in their sins they cannot do anything to justify themselves and God loves them he died for them That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 to 4 tells us that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died for our sins. What is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross? For our sins. He paid for our sins. What a great news, right? He didn't die for himself. He died for us. He died for us sinners. That's why it is great news. He died for the sinners. He didn't die for the righteous. He didn't die for the people who are okay, fine. No, no, no. He actually died for sinners. And no one appreciated him when he died, right? No one appreciated that, Oh Lord, you died for me. At that point of time, no one said like that. Everyone mocked at him and made fun of him. When we live the life of the gospel, many times people might not appreciate us I'm telling you it, to your surprise people may not appreciate your life at all that was the life of Lord Jesus and then he was buried and raised on the third day according to the scripture he was buried 
and the third day he rose again. Why? Because to justify that his death as a payment for our sins was vindicated by God, authenticated by God, that this man, if you believe, you may die in your sins, but you will also resurrect like him in newness and new life. So whether a person is in jail, a person is condemned, a person is really sinful, but everyone can resurrect in new life. The good news is, wherever we are in our sins today, whichever stage we are, God can raise us again if we believe that He died for our sins. And we can, we have, we, if we can appreciate and receive Him into our lives. So we have seen the first one is God has a plan for everybody. The second spiritual law is that sin has separated us. Sin came to everyone. All of us are sinful. Thirdly, Lord, God provided Lord Jesus Christ as a solution to our sins by Him dying on the cross. The last one, the fourth one. The fourth spiritual law is that everyone must place their faith in Jesus Christ in order to receive the gift of salvation. Hallelujah. In other words, even though gift is already given, available at our doorstep, right? Unless we receive, we cannot benefit it. Let's say someone brings really expensive gift. Worth of crores of rupees. Millions of dollars, right? But they come and say, I want to gift this to you. Will it become yours? How will it become yours? You just have to receive it. And this gift of salvation, we cannot measure with money. I'm just saying crores of rupees, millions of dollars, for us to be able to understand the worth. But actually, the death of Jesus Christ, nothing can replace. It is so, so precious. All we need to do is receive Him into our lives. Invite Him and receive Him into our lives. Then, He will give us the right to become children of God. We need to receive Him. John chapter 1 verse 12 tells us, Yet to those who receive Him, to those who believe in His name, He gave them the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. To whom? To those who believed. Yet to those who receive. So, the good news, many people already understand that Jesus died for their sins, right? Even many people who are not Christians, they know that Jesus died for humanity. But his, the, the blessings that, that come from His death and resurrection cannot be, they, we cannot have until we receive Him into our lives. So that's why Lord, please come into my life. I'm a sinner. I need you. Please come into my life. I want to live a new life. I don't want to be trapped in sin. Because what? Sin is trapping. The more you trap, the more you become slaves. Any form of addiction, alcohol, sex, gambling, it is trapping, okay? So who can liberate us? It's Christ. Lord, I don't want to live this kind of life. I want to live in your plan. Amazing plan. To, to have the joy and the peace. Sin will not allow us to have joy and peace. Sin will not, sin will not allow us to have that. He will try to, sin will be tempting us to have short pleasure, replacing the eternal bliss. And we'll live in guilt, guilty, guilt, shame, and embarrassment. Sin is like that. 
But the gift of God, salvation, is joy and peace in Jesus Christ. And so, we need to receive, we need to, as we believe, we need to receive Him into our lives. That's why He said, Yeah, to those who receive Him, to those who believe in His name, He gives them, He gave them the right to become children of God. In fact, this is past tense. He didn't say he will give them the right to become children. He gave them the right to become children. As they believe, he gave them. Oh my God. The right to become children of God? Who can do that? Only God can do that, right? Because Christ Jesus is God. So he gave them the right to become and it is so. Today, I can also make false uh, promise. You do this, I'll give you the right to become children of God. It will be false. But He can do it because He died for us. And as He said, He rose again. I can also say that I will die for you, for the penalty of your sins, but I will not rise again. I cannot rise. I am not the plan of God for your salvation. Christ is the plan of God for the salvation of humankind. That's why believe in Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 16 verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Believe in Lord Jesus has such power. If we believe in his name, we will be saved. No amount of good works can save us. No amount of good things can save us. He is the bridge, right? We are separated from God. We cannot go to a holy God. There are good works. There is religion. There are so, so many things. People try to reach to God, but there is no way. Only Christ, the cross is the bridge. Only the cross is the bridge to God. There is no other way. And that is, the cross is the gift of God. Gift means you didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. Gift means it's a gift. One day, one man was distributing tracts, some other religious tracts. And he was saying, Brother, <laughs> I was very happy, Brother, okay, I went to you. This is a gift. Take it. Okay. <laughs> so I took it. After I took it, he's, I, told him, I told him, I'm a preacher myself. Okay. <laughs> then he said, Oh, you have to donate some money. Then I told him, that's not a gift. Because you're asking some money for donation. Then you should not advertise it as a gift. Because a gift is really a gift. There is no money involved. Okay. Then he started saying this and then I don't want to go into explanation. The idea here is that that was not a gift. But our neighbor prepared a sweet. She came and gave me. This is a gift, have it. I didn't pay anything. I just took it and have it. That is gift, right? So, salvation is a gift of God. It's not work. It's not that something that we did we cannot add anything to the finished work of Lord Jesus on the cross. He did it, and all we need to do is receive that and believe in His name. There is no other way. So, we are saved by grace through faith, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. We are saved by grace through faith. And this is not our doing. This is the gift of God. Amen? It is the gift of God. Therefore, if we understand this message, 
all, all of us will fall on our knees and say, Lord, I'm also a sinner. What? Why I'm not able to have the joy and the peace? I always thought, if I play more games, if I do this, I will gain peace. If I earn more, I'll gain peace. If I do something more, something. If I get into good position, if I earn more, if I get fame, famous, I will be more peaceful, I'll be more joyful, I used to think, but I am not able to have that. I now realize that because I didn't have you in my life. Therefore, anyone who understood this simple message would say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Thank you that you sent your son, Lord Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. As a payment for my sins, I receive him into my life. Lord Jesus, please come into my life, become my Lord and my Savior. I receive him into my life. I thank you for this wonderful grace, wonderful gift of salvation, and the forgiveness of sins, and the eternal life. Why? All our sins, we cannot do anything to be forgiven. Jesus did it for us. We just have to put faith in that and we are saved. That, that, is, that is why it is good news. So I hope that all of us can be the ones who trust in Lord Jesus, who understand that God has a plan for each one of us. You cannot discover that plan of God, wonderful plan of God until you align yourselves with His plan, which is to save us first. So a person who is not saved, you cannot live your best life now. Some people say, I don't need God, I will live my life to the fullest. You cannot live your life to the fullest without God. God is the one who created us, who has a plan for us, who has a purpose for us. We know very well because everything that we created, we put purpose into it. God created us, He put purpose into His creation. And how can we try to live without understanding His plan? Today, God wants to save everyone. And this four sim by following these four simple steps, we can also gain eternal life. We can gain the joy and the peace. And we can live in confidence no matter what comes into our lives. We can face tomorrow because He lives. And I hope that this will be our testimony as well. Amen? Let's pray. <clears throat> Almighty, gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to praise you, Lord. Through these four simple steps, four spiritual laws, we understand that you have a plan for each and every one of us. You have a wonderful plan for each, each and every one of us, but we try to seek those plans outside your presence without involving you. But today we realize that, Lord, we have to come to you and see where we stand. And when we look at the mirror of your word, we realize that all of us have sinned and fall short of your glory. And the consequence is only death. The consequence is, the wages of this is that we deserve death. But you loved us so much. You made a provision to Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore today, Lord, we thank you. We receive Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. We thank you for, we thank our Lord Jesus Christ for dying for us on the cross of our sins and our salvation. We receive him into our lives. Lord, please come and be the Lord of our lives. If we have not repented of our sins, if our heart is so small and it's not able to understand your way, Please forgive us again this morning. Enlarge our tent. Enlarge our heart. 
and allow us to be able to receive your word deeply. And this morning, Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of salvation, which is totally free. Lord, may we understand this preciousness. We, I also pray for the, all those people who are struggling to understand what your will is. I pray that, Lord, they may be able to make decision by listening to this precious word. As they listen, Lord, may they be blessed. They, they, may they make a right decision. If we live in sins, the end result is ugly. It is eternal death, eternal punishment. It is hell. But if we repent of our sins and receive Christ into our lives, there will be joy, peace, and eternal life. Speak to each one of us, and Father, may many more, more and more people, as you have saved millions of people around the world through this simple message, may all the listeners also make clear decision by hearing this word. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.